What you've learned about production involves inputs and outputs. The inputs, mowers and workers, and the output, lawns mowed, are all measured as quantities. But firms are in business to make profit, which is measured in dollars. In this video, we'll begin to translate our knowledge about production into dollars. The first step is to understand how much it costs to produce different amounts of output. Firms face two different kinds of costs, fixed costs and variable costs. A fixed cost is the cost of a firm's fixed inputs, those inputs whose quantity cannot be changed as the output level changes in the short run. Typical sources of fixed cost include the rent paid for buildings, the cost of equipment, and the fees for operating licenses. In the long run, when the quantity of all inputs is variable, there is no fixed cost. Firms can spend more or less on buildings, equipment, licenses, and other inputs to best suit their level of production. Variable cost, however, is the cost of a firm's variable inputs. Variable cost changes with the number of units of output produced. Typical sources of variable cost include payments for wages, electricity, and raw materials. So, this table illustrates the various types of cost for the Blade Runner lawn mowing company. The first two columns, right here, repeat the worker and output information from the production schedule in, in the previous video. Column 3 shows Blade Runner's fixed cost, which you can see is $80 per day and never changes. The fixed cost all includes the expense of renting and storing the two lawnmowers. Recall that a firm's fixed cost does not increase as output increases. Thus, the fixed cost is $80 regardless of the number of lawns that are mowed. Column 4 shows Blade Runner's variable cost, which is what it must pay its workers. This cost does increase, as you can see, as output increases because the company must hire more workers in order to mow the lawns. Now, what we can see is that the daily wage of each worker is $60 which is right there. So the variable cost is $60 times the number of workers that are hired. So, for example, if we want to mow, let's say, 21 lawns, right there, then to do that, we have to hire four workers. And 60 times 4 is $240. So that will be our variable cost. Now to keep things simple, we will suppose that any other variable costs, such as the cost of gasoline for the lawnmowers, are insignificant. Now, a firm's total cost, and so we see fixed cost and variable cost there, so let's move on to total cost. A firm's total cost, which we see right, defined right here, is the entire amount the firm must spend to produce a specified amount of output, found by adding the firm's fixed cost to its variable cost. Blade Runner's total cost is reported in column 5 of this table. For example, the total cost of mowing 24 lawns right here would be $80 in fixed cost plus $300 in variable cost, which would equal $380 in total cost. Firms that want to earn the highest possible profit will seek the cheapest way to produce a given quantity of output. Otherwise, they would be wasting money that could otherwise contribute to their profit. A firm that selects its inputs in order to produce its desired level of output at the lowest cost possible is called a cost minimizer. A firm can only adjust variable inputs to minimize cost. In the long run, all inputs are variable, and Blade Runner could sell all its mowers and change the quantity of any other input. But in the short run, Blade Runner can vary only the number of workers it hires to mow lawns. So minimizing cost in the short run comes down to mowing lawns using as few workers as possible. The costs in this table are the minimum costs for mowing each number of lawns. For example, Blade Runner cannot mow 17 lawns 
with fewer than three workers. So the lowest possible variable cost of mowing 17 lawns is 3 times $60, or $180. In the long run, mowers become a variable input for Blade Runner. Then, cost minimization involves selecting the cheapest combination of mowers and workers to mow any given number of lawns. But for now, we are considering the firm's cost in the short run, when Blade Runner cannot adjust the number of mowers. In a previous chapter, we explained that marginal cost, defined right here, is the additional cost of doing something one more time. In the context of production, marginal cost is the additional cost of producing one more unit of output. For most goods, the cost of making another unit rises at some point as more is produced. This occurs because of the law of diminishing returns. If each worker adds less to output than the previous worker, then the expenditure on labor to produce each additional unit of output will rise as it takes more and more workers to produce the additional output. So column 6 shows the marginal cost at various levels of production for Blade Runner. Marginal cost is calculated as the change in total cost divided by the change in output. For example, if Blade Runner increases its output from 12 to 17 lawns, an increase of 5 lawns, total cost rises from $260 to $320. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Let me erase that. I got that wrong. As we go from 12 to 17, it increases from 200 to 260 And that's an increase of $60. So the marginal cost per additional lawn is $60 divided by 5, and that would equal 12. Notice that as you look down column 6, as we go all the way down column 6, the marginal cost is increasing as output increases. For example, as we just calculated the marginal cost is $12 to increase output to 17 lawns, when Blade Runner increases output from 17 to 21 lawns, we see the marginal cost rises to $15. And a further increase to 24 lawns, right here, the marginal cost would increase to $20. So it becomes increasingly costly to mow additional lawns as the total number of lawns mowed increases.